day that I repented of my sins and became a born again Christian. Uh, reading this text here, uh, I ask you the question, what was the most exciting day in David's life? Uh -huh. Y'all remember David in the Bible, don't you? Right. Hello, lights. I'm by myself. I'm picking on the pedestal. Y'all want to say amen with me? Amen. 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 Uh, do you believe the greatest day for David? Do you believe the greatest day for David was when he defeated the lion or the bear? Come on now. Those were great days, yes. but not the greatest day. Mm -hmm. Do you think the most thrilling day for David was when he defeated Goliath? Mm. That was a high water mark in the life of David, mm -hmm. but it was not the greatest day of David's life. Mm -hmm. Do you think the greatest day for David was when he was anointed the king of Israel? Mm -hmm. There was no doubt a significant day for David. Uh -huh. It is a privilege uh -huh. 
a responsibility to bring to this world wrapped in the golden chain of gospel and laid at our king's feet. Anything short of this is high treason in heaven's court before heaven's kings. We have an awesome opportunity in America today and that is to tell people about the goodness of Jesus right. and all that he's done for me. Yeah. Right. Getting back to our story here now, the Ark of the Covenant was a treasure chest of blessing. Mm -hmm. The dimensions of the Ark were about four feet by two feet by two feet. Mm -hmm. The Ark was made of wood yes. and old lay with pure gold. On top of the Ark was a solid slab a gold called the mercy seat. Amen. Oh and y'all ever been in the mercy seat? Yeah. Some of y'all still in the mercy seat. Yeah. Jesus. Out of the mercy seat were two cherubims and their wings was outstretched in, in between the wings of the two cherubims dwell the glory of God yeah. in the holy of holies. Yeah. Well, God will reveal himself between the two cherubims while the mercy seat was sprinkled with blood from the parcel of the lamb. That was a holy sight. Well, the Ark of the Covenant led them out of bitterness. The Ark of the Covenant led them into blessings. The Ark of the Covenant led them into battle. The Ark had divine power and energy. It leveled mountains, it laid waste cities, and it struck the dead enemy. The ark led the Israelites from victory to victory. Mm -hmm. But look at our passage here. It was it depicts it, 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 the Israel, Israelites in Israel against the Philistines. Mm -hmm. The Israelites were losing the battle. They were. They were losing the battle. Mm -hmm. They have already lost four thousand men. Mm -hmm. The Israelites have become self-sufficient, like some of us do. Mm -hmm. My God. Someone had an idea for them to go and fetch the ark of God mm -hmm. as an afterthought. Mm -hmm. They decided to bring God into their battle plans. Mm -hmm. You know how we do. We bring God in. I miss. They only wanted God when their plans had failed them. Wow. Uh, that they wow. hit you out. Yeah, sure. They only wanted God when their plans had failed them. Uh -huh. Well, the ark was kept by two immoral men. Who called themselves men of God. Uh -huh. Their name was Hophni and Phinehas. Oh These two men were living in adultery. Uh -huh. These two oh men had the army given to God to bring the sacred object into the battle. Uh -huh. That it might save them. We are in a battle today. We are, we are in a spiritual warfare today. Uh -huh. We need to disobey ourselves of the idea that God will bless us. In spite of our disobedience. Wow. God wow. not gonna bless us. Wow. If you being disobedient, My if God. we bring God into the picture while we are disobeying Him, what? He will engineer our failure. Yes. God God. Gets more glory. Come on, God gets more glory in the field of his carnal people than he does in their victories. Yes. God is interested. And not covering sin, but God is interested in exposing sin. Yeah. Right. From then on, the battle went the way of the Philistines. The Philistines, they lost about 30,000 foot soldiers. <clears throat> Ichabod was the end result of their disobedience. <clears throat> well, the wife of Phinehas, before she died, said, God has forsaken us. <clears throat> the glory was gone. I don't know about you, Al, but I don't want God's glory going. Amen. Amen. No. Well, Pastor Seller, what you mean by God's glory? Well, I'm going to tell you about God's glory. If you woke up this morning, you had God's glory. Uh -huh. If you went to the refrigerator, looked in the refrigerator, you might not have had no juice, but you had some water. Uh -huh. You had God's glory. Uh -huh. If you had some clothes on your back, guess what? You got God's glory. Amen. Yeah. If you got two or three pairs of shoes in your closet, you got God's glory. I want God's glory on me. I know we're going to the house of the Lord. We're going to second chance. We're going to change your heart. But don't come in here looking for us. 
When you come in, you want to see the glory of God. That's what y'all want to see. I want people to see the glory of God. It's not about me, but I want you to see the glory of God. I want to be able to tell somebody, what is it about you? Well, it ain't nothing about me, but it's about God's glory living on the inside of me. And the same glory I got, and you can have it. It's not all mine. So now, from then on, the battle went the way of the Philistines. The Israelites lost 30,000 foot soldiers. Ichabod was the end of the disobedience. Are we pulling God first in our lives? Mm. Or are we facing God when all else have failed in our lives? Yeah, right. I'm going to say that again. Are we putting God first in our lives? Right. Oh, are we facing God when all else has failed? Jesus. Will we make up our mind that God will be the first in our lives regardless of what happens? That's right. What has happened before will put God first in our lives. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? For us, put God first in our lives. That's right. In this revival, in this revival, uh -huh. we must make sure that we do not try to manipulate the power of God. Right, right. God will use us. He will not use him. He can't use God. Right. We must be first to see all the battle plans. We must not pressure the power of God. Uh, oh, Pastor, what are you talking about? Putting pressure on the power of God. Uh -huh. Y'all know how it is. Uh -huh. uh, we come to church and our, mind, our body is here, but our mind is on the other side of the side. Uh -huh. We put come pressure on, on the power of God. Uh -huh. uh, we might say it like a while ago, but my brother here was mentioning. It don't take all of that. Well, you don't, it might not take all of that for you. Come on now. But you don't know what he's been through. Ah, Does it take all of that for me too? Because yeah. you don't know what I've been through. Ah. So I'm going to give God all I got. Yeah. 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 I'm going to give him all I got. If it, if it worries you, then it's your bad thing. Yeah. I'm going to give him all I got. Yeah. I, mean, I gave the devil all I had. That's what has happened before will put God first in our lives. He must be first in all our battle plans. We must not pressure the power of God. That's right. If there's to be a spiritual victory in America, God will have to give it to us. Number two, we must not try to master this revival power. Amen. Wow. We must not try. Wow. We must not try to remaster the revival power. In God's word, the Philistines got what they wanted. Mm -hmm. They did not want what they got. When they got God in their side, they were playing with rats, disease, and other things. Then someone looked inside the ark, and fifty thousand were slain. When they tried to capture somebody else's God, all kinds of problems came their way. Yes, Let me tell y'all something tonight. God cannot be captured. That's right. We cannot use somebody else's God or somebody else's spirituality. Mm -hmm. We cannot use somebody else's prayer life to attain victory. Right. We cannot use somebody else's Bible knowledge of God. We cannot use someone else's anointment of the Holy Spirit. We cannot capture someone else's power with God. We cannot have someone else's revival. We must make up our mind that we're going to have our own revival. Amen. My God. I often hear people say, if you're going to sing a song, make it your song. Yeah. And we got to do it out there. We got to make it our song. Amen. Yeah. Make it our revival. And revival just don't start us here tonight. That's right. Revival is when you die back down the road to High Point tonight. Uh, you're going to have a revival in your car. I'll be a revival in the van. Amen. I'll be a revival when you're going back home. Jesus. Don't you know we are in the fourth generation mm -hmm. of Pentecostalism in America? Mm -hmm. The first generation generates. The second generation motivates. The third generation speculates. Mm -hmm. The fourth generation dissipates. But today, we must believe that God is to take us back to the first generation of the Spirit with God. That's right. This is the kind of gobble 
Now we need to, we need the kind of revival that's going to generate. Right. In America, we have what we call secondhand religion. Uh -huh. uh, we watch other people worship on television. Uh -huh. We watch other people preach. Uh -huh. But yet the message goes in one ear. And that's the other ear. That's a bit. I'm going to send him straight to the pit. Since he's thinking it'd be a threat. Like my I ain't pay that debt. Hold on, wait, let me get the check. Last time that I checked, started off down bad in the mud. I came out blessed. Certified souls with this righteous breath.